So we're here today in Glenmire to just talk about, I suppose, nutrition of cows and uh, maybe the lack of available minerals at this time of the year. Thanks, Margaret. It's great to be here in, in, in Glenmire this morning. Uh, I suppose weather took a turn for the worst this week. Uh, February, I suppose, from a cow nutrition point of view, has been absolutely excellent. Yeah. Uh, with really good dry weather. Uh, we had a nice bank of grass carried over average farm covers were just ideal really coming into the 1st of February uh, and grazing conditions were excellent so generally cows have gotten off to a good start for the month of February however March hasn't been as kind to us um, I suppose we're probably facing down the into the first week of April so we're facing into the second rotation most farms were probably average farm covers a little bit under where we'd like it to be um, and cow condition on most farms and on this farm here just conditions going cows are in nice condition, there's a nice shine on them, so uh, they're, they're well set up at the moment. I suppose the tricky point from a nutritional point of view at the moment will be is uh, a little bit of supplementation for the next couple of weeks and you can hear the load are going there in the background. Yeah. Um, so it is very important to just get in, like dry matters of grass probably this week are probably down around 13-14% at best. Um, probably getting into the l a little bit lighter covers then as well in the yeah. next week or two so it's important to put in a bit of fibre and put in a bit of structure to keep that nice room and mat so the cow has a cut factor um, and that she's just able to utilise that nice soft progress that she has. Um, I suppose that this, uh, um, when, when cows are, are bulling too, I suppose they would be, um, uh, would be a bigger um, bigger draw on, on their, their um, their minerals and, and, and um, their feed intake as well, wouldn't they, you know? Yeah, like, I suppose this really is the critical stage uh, yeah. of the year for cows, to be honest with you, because what we find is some sort of a week before they start to calf, their intakes begin to go down, yeah. and they almost go down to zero. Yeah. So they're actually using uh, body reserves of fat, protein, not for muscle, and their mineral reserves out of their bones and their tissues and stuff like that. Right. Uh, and then it takes them sort of the next 30 days, ideally, they're sort of just building up, so their production starts up here and their intake starts down here and the two of them are sort of monitoring. And we're hoping at this stage, around the sort of Patrick's Day, that we're merging both, both our intakes are matching our production. And we'd be hoping to peak maybe in the next seven, 15 days, depending on your calving pattern. So the thing is to get your dry matter intakes, your protein and your mineral requirement matching your peak yield production. Right. Um, and then, Unfortunately, or fortunately, peak yield ties in with breeding season in spring calf systems. Yeah. So there, it's very, very important to get that balance that we're getting the right level of fibre, energy, protein, and mineral and vitamin into the cow so that she's able to sustain the production level to ensure the profitability of the farm and also that she has enough in reserve that she's actually able to gain a little bit of weight and grow that embryo when we fertilise it okay. at, at AI. Um, so I suppose it's it would be it's it's a good idea so to to um, give uh, give cows a bit of a helping hand with the, with their minerals with um, a bolus or um, in in this case a bolus, um, but you know that they, that they get the the amount that they require um, for optimum. Um, I suppose optimum fertility. Now, as I say, this time of the year. Yeah, well, I suppose this is the big thing now is is to optimise actually input into the cow to max to maximize her output yeah um, and the next sort of six weeks probably is critical into that yeah um, so yes i what i'd say is, is that number one is energy is the main driver so the yeah. cows needs to be gaining weight so like the tagus research will show us that if a cow drops more than sort of a half body condition score um, ideally they want to be coming in there someplace between 2.8 and 3 ideally 3 body condition right so if those cows are struggling a little bit um, we probably need to do what we did this morning, just do a body conditions going to cows. Anything that's suboptimal and that's sort of below 2.8, definitely you've been trying to view up. Do you put in an extra bit of feed? Yes. Uh, or do you put them on once a day? Do you make a separate mob and put them on once a day? Okay. Uh, and give them every chance they can uh, for the next sort of three weeks to a month before the breeding season will start. Yeah. You, don't, you just don't want them pulling off a reserves. You don't want yeah. them pulling off a reserves yeah. and they need to be gaining, like they need, they need to be gaining a body condition score yeah. at this stage and they yeah. need to be gaining, uh, so they need to be building their stores of energy, protein and mineral and vitamin. Yeah, and unfortunately they're not getting it from uh, vitamin D from the sun at the moment anyway. It's, <laughs> no. It, yeah, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not happening. Yeah, well hopefully next week, we were hoping for this week, but yeah. hopefully next week hopefully is. Next week, um, yeah. I suppose th the good thing is, is that like, we're, we're still, we're after getting the hour this week. Um, yeah. Most fellas will start to start pre-breeding next week. Yeah. Uh, 
as they tail paint, I suppose the recommendation would be is have a look and see just body condition, score your cows, uh, just lung, just, just so organ, just run along the, t the see if there any sort of yeah. uh, bones on, the t on, on, on her back begin to show uh, what her, sh are her short ribs like, can you see her short ribs here and can you see her long ribs and like it's, it's very good to put your hand on them so it's an ideal time when you're tail painting just to run your hand yeah. along there so if you see the bones coming out you know if you can see the long rib and you can see the short rib fair chances are you know you're probably marginal on body condition yeah um, and then that means that she's just taking a lot of her reserves so she's yeah. lost a little bit more um, body yeah. condition than you like and she's probably uh, used a little bit more mineral and vitamin yeah. from her own results. That, 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 and we can see um, Dennis is, is um, tail painting here now um, for the pre-breeding season. Yeah, I, I, I suppose America, there's been huge changes in, 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 in breeding as everybody knows over the past couple of years. There's a huge uh, investment and a huge interest in sex semen and a huge demand for it and I suppose it's, it's not cheap um, yeah. but it's very effective. Um, we're getting our replacement heifers early uh, we're getting our replacement heifers from our best cows. Yeah. Uh, but as part of that, it's, you just need everything right. So literally any cows that are sort of, that potentially uh, you need to know, are they on the first cycle or on the second cycle to give you the best results. Yeah. Um, and then also that it gives you a chance to identify cows that maybe had a little subclinical metritis issues or something right. like that in the background. Yeah. Uh, or may have lost a little bit of body condition extra and yeah. uh, suffering from a bit of cystic uh, and that needs a little bit of treatment. So ideally try and do that at least three to six weeks yeah. before your planned uh, start of breeding season. Yeah, yeah, and I think the planned start of breeding season in this farm is around the I think for heifers 24th of April so he's in an ideal time really now. Ideal time yeah. actually yeah you're yeah. ideal this week uh, sort of this weekend 1st of April would yeah. be ideal for your yeah. roughly three weeks. Out. I suppose the cows would be a fraction later than that yeah. Yeah, yeah generally what, what has happened for the past couple of years just to work the workload um, heifers are probably done sort of that sort of five to six days yeah. maybe a week before the start of the, 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 the main herd. Yeah. Um, and I suppose then there has been a little bit of debate around and um, some farms we've taught is what they're doing is maybe their lower production cows to keep it tighter, they're probably using a bit of beef semen on those lower yes. production cows, yeah. uh, again sort of add a bit of value yeah. um, to the calf um, and they can afford to have that little, uh, if they take a couple of days extra they're still just yeah. calving nicely in the start of yeah. the breeding season. Like, you know. But as you say, I suppose, like, crucially, um, like, the heifers, you know, I suppose a lot of them are being synchronised now with, the, with uh, using the sex semen, and it's, it's so expensive and everything. You want to make sure that they're, they're cycling properly and that everything is in working order yeah, before, you, before you, um, you hit into the to breeding season. Yeah, and I suppose probably, you know, our heifers, our replacement heifers, are our future of our herds yeah. and are our investment in the future. And I suppose on a lot of farms, they're probably maybe at... Uh, reared off-site of yeah. the main farm or they're a contract rear or something like that um, and I suppose they can be a little bit um, a bit of a panic coming up to breeding then to know are they up to weight and are they up to, to, to condition and, yeah. uh, breed. and I suppose the biggest driver of fertility in heifers uh, and is well documented is weight for age yeah. so they need to be at least 60% of the mature cows weight at surface yeah. um, and also I suppose look in just to eliminate any risk, particularly on minerals, um, it's a, it's a, always very good to boost them sort of that three weeks or a month before they expect to start at the yeah. breeding season because that's when that egg is being released and being uh, yeah. being set up. So uh, that's when either a, a, a drench or a, a, to just to boost the system um, a for, for, for for it and then put a bolus down and that yeah. covers you then for yeah. the critical uh, conception period afterwards. Yeah. So um, I suppose. Um, I go through the dose, the dose rate, um, when they should be dosed, um, uh, what's the optimum time to, to dosing um, the cows, is it a turnout or? A um, you can get super grazing 250 balls which lasts for uh, 250 days, so this will cover you for the entire grazing season. Uh, it will depend on the mineral requirement of the farm. Uh, some farmers will uh, administer this bolus at um, drying off. Uh, and then by that way it's covering the critical period of the dry cow mineral particularly if maybe feeding space uh, is a little bit restrictive on some grass based systems uh, so it ensures that the cow gets roughly half her daily requirement of the essential uh, minerals uh, over that 250 day period so that is copper, uh, zinc, selenium, iodine and cobalt. Um, 
Alternative, you can uh, bowl us at uh, turnout, uh, so that is either sort of mid to early, or mid to early March. Um, and in that way, what you're doing is as, as grass begins to, in consumption with the cow, begins to increase, you're taking out the availabilities uh, of uh, whatever minerals may be deficient on the farm. What is the difference between um, a mineral drench or an abolus? Like it is, you know, um, I suppose uh, which one is probably more. They're both. You both both have to go down the throat, like so. They're both um, the same. The same application, but which one is more beneficial? Um, yeah, it's a very good question. It is one that gets asked very very often on farm, and I suppose the most important thing there is that um, a mineral drench is designed that it's to give you a short, quick lift. Uh, so it's a high bioavailable mineral and vitamin drench. So if you're in a deficient situation, uh, it boosts the cow's uh, reserves. And then uh, with the bolus, it's giving you a guaranteed release over uh, 250 days. Uh, so you're getting the same amount of mineral going into the cow every day over the grazing period. So the drench will boost uh, the cow's uh, reserves. And then the bolus will keep them topped up every day over the over the over the grazing season and you know uh, bill sometimes uh, you know there's problems with uh, regurgitation of of boluses is there a, a, um, a, a prime a proper time to to do give a bolus um like should the cows be fasting should they be um you know is there a, an optimum time that you know that that it's uh, it, there's a bigger chance that they won't regurgitate a bolus yeah a very good question Margaret is and this is something that's probably overlooked on a lot of farms uh, timing of when you administrate a bolus is very important. As we know, the an animal's rumen it can be anything from a 30 litres to a 50 litre container if you look at it in a barrel con, in a barrel situation. Uh, and on top of that, we create a, what we call a, um, a fibre mat. And on top of this fibre mat, it basically allows the bacteria platform to grow off of and to ferment the, the grasses to eat it. So if you have the cows fully fed, um, this fibre mat is fairly dense. So if you take, even though it's a heavy bolus, um, and you drop it in on top of it, that mess, if she coughs up a cud ball to chew it, that bolus can actually come up with it. So ideally, what the recommendation would be to restrict the feed for maybe five to six hours before your bolus, and bolus on an empty stomach. And in that way, the bolus is weighted um, with a small little weight. And then as it gets the fluid in the rumen, it expands by 15%. So that actually sinks it down through the fluid and it sits it then into, between the, into the reticulum um, so it stays safe so she can't just cough it up again and release out then uh, on a daily basis. I suppose that probably makes um, um, a drying off period probably the ideal time to do them so um, where you can, where you can you know, have the opportunity to restrict feed um, whereas you kind of don't have that when they're out on grass. Or yeah, absolutely, Mark. Right. There's probably drying off, most people will have them in the yard. They'll do the dry cow therapy on them and they'll probably be giving them a dose for some sort of parasites or something like that. So the cows are just that little bit more empty. So it's probably an easier time to dose them. Whereas if you're dosing at this time of the year, um, I suppose it, if you can time it with maybe on off grazing so that you just take them off the paddock that little bit earlier for three to four hours right. uh, and, and just leave them just uh, break down that room and mat that are a little bit empty. And yeah. how you'll know that is if you stand on the left hand side of the cow, this is roughly the area where her room is. So, as you can see, this cow is then here since breakfast time. Um, so she's in here maybe two to three hours, and you can see when, when she came in, that's nice and round. And uh, within that couple of hours, her room, the mat is after just sinking down a small bit. And we can see it here, whereas if we come back to look at her in a couple of hours' time, when she gets a full bit of grass, this room will be swelled out nicely. Okay. So that's sort of room for a little, what we call, a hollow. Five o'clock shadow yeah. uh, under, under the rib. Yeah, yeah. So this cow has already been bolused and um, as you can see she's under no stress and she's, no. she's very, very happy after her bolus and we've also put some tail paint on just to... Um, to but the ideal situation is to give super grazer to the, to the entire herd and at, at either drying off or turn out. Yeah. And, um, um, and um, it, it will do over the critical period at drying off or if, they're, if it's grazing they'll get the, the minerals they need. Um, that they're not getting from, from maybe from the grass. Yeah, and espe especially with a year like this year, Matt, with input costs probably rise, or input costs staying high, and milk price falling a little bit faster than what we'd like to see, there's going to be a little bit pressure maybe on supplemented feed, particularly if, if we get um, into the peak growing season. So um, we know that on average that the cow is probably only getting about 
60% for required mineral from grass on right. the average dairy farm. So every farm would just need to probably look a little bit closer to share out how they supplement the minerals because uh, they're critical for hoof health, uh, fertility, and just the general well-being of the cow. Yeah, that was my next question. What what is the like? What are the main benefits? Like as you say, hoof health, fertility, which is very important. Um, yeah. In, in, in the spring calving situation, like fertility is the main driver of profitability. We need to get those cows. We need to be getting up over that 80% um, submission rate and over 60% conception rate in the first six weeks. Um, so literally what we're trying to do there is if we're deficient probably in copper, copper, selenium and iodine are the three critical minerals uh, that have a huge influence on health fertility. Um, so they're covered at this stage and we just need to make sure that the cow is well required. The other thing is, is that if you have changed your management practices in the past couple of years, um, so a lot of farms line wouldn't have been maybe spread uh, as much uh, on the home receiving platform, um, whereas there has been a lot of lime being used just for fertilizer prices to, to free up the peas and yeah. K's and free up the nitrogen. Uh, liming will, as you lift the pH, molybdenum in the soils becomes more available, and unfortunately molybdenum also has a negative impact and can knock up copper availability into the cow. Okay, okay. And from the, the bolus, will they get their entire um, um, mineral minerals up and or do they get a percentage of it or, um, you know, their, their requirement, their, their mineral requirement for, the, the, for their daily mineral requirement? The 250 bolus is designed to give roughly 50% okay. of the cow's requirement. Uh, so that way it, co it covers you that we'll assume that um, that she'll get always roughly around 50% from either grass and a small bit of supplementation, and other 50% then will be covered by the bolus. Okay. Um, okay. So we'll just recap there. So it's one bolus, and it'll last for 250 days, um, and it'll give them um, zinc, copper, iodine, selenium, and cobalt, and it'll give 50% of their daily requirements. Yes, up to 50% 50, 50 oh, yeah, of their daily requirements. Yeah, 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 for the average farm. For the average farm, and it's they're very necessary for hoof health, um, rumen health, and um, fertility, which is the most important thing at this time of the year. Absolutely, yeah. Fertility, um, hoof health, um, and just general health, well being of the animal, yeah. and boost our immune system. Yeah. Okay, so I suppose we better let these girls go. They're standing yeah. for a while now this morning, hungry. Yeah. So um, uh, thanks very much, Bill, for your, your um, insight into, into the um, breeding, pre-breeding and the, um, the whole uh, grazing system. Lovely. And um, okay. Thanks, Margaret.